All right, so we're here at the customer's house. It looks like it's a single story house. Um, looks like I can see the cable on the outside, so it's going to be exterior to interior penetrations. So I'm gonna go make contact with the customer and see why he has lost signal. All right, so we got no signal at the hopper. Unable to get access to the attic. But looking up here, I see a bunch of wires. And then looking through this little broken piece, I see uh, what looks like to be a hybrid solo hub. Uh, it also looks like there's a splitter back there. So I'm gonna replace the hub and see what happens. All right. Went ahead and replaced it. New one, old one. Also found a solo node up here. Nice. Been running low on those. Let's see what happens to the hopper. All right. So we just got done at that customer's house. What it ended up being was this hybrid solo hub. What happens is, is especially on the hopper threes, it pushes a lot of electricity through them, and they fry out over time. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be too old and it was sitting in the attic so it wasn't really exposed to the weather uh, at least rain so it just must have failed prematurely so now i'm just going to go to my account notes and um, i ran a check switch uh, he did have internet so i verified that uh, he did ask for a new remote some of the buttons were sticking and then i'm going to put on the outside work that i replace the hybrid solo hub in the attic i always put in attic so the next technician knows where to all right so i just made contact with the customer and she stated that she got a new roof so i'm going to go ahead and repoint the dish and um, probably replace all these connectors and components as well so here's the tool belt i carry um i carry all of my coax termination cables uh, i carry a half inch on a ratchet and just to tighten dish assemblies when they're on the roof um, a level for when I mount a mast. Um, I carry a little headlamp that um, works wonders in attics or crawl spaces that do not have lights. Um, a screwdriver for wall plates and stuff, some zip ties. And then over on this side is kind of my specialty stuff. Um, so I have my toners, um, some silicone, and then I have some uh, connectors, cables, and then in this little bottle right here is where I keep all of my um, all of my like drill bits and um, stuff I'm going to use for my impact in my drill. Main things I use are these, and this mounts the lag bolts, and then this mounts the screw clips. So this is going to be the biggest problem when customers get a new roof and the roofers put the dish back on the roof is that they never hit a stud some do some don't some roofers are excellent um, some aren't and what happens is she said it worked for a while and then it stopped working and the problem is is because this whole mast is loose you can see on the base plate the whole dish itself can just move very freely so because roofers did this they put a bunch of this stuff over the lags so i don't even have access to the lags um, so now i have to talk to the customer okay now we are going to go ahead and point the dish so here's how i do this I hook up my connector into the sap buddy that's going straight to the dish. I'll go ahead and see where we're at right now. So like I said, on 119, there's no signal. So now that I got those two bolts and this one loose, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the dish left to right and see if I can pick anything up. Okay, so we picked up one. Um, you can ID it and make sure it's the right satellite, but since it's Western Arc and it has three, I like to just go through and see if there's three there. So, looks like I've got like 52. Um, see if I pull a little bit more to the right. 
goes up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, lock in my bolts right there and then we can work on elevation next. Okay, so I went ahead and I tightened these two bolts so I can't spin it left to right anymore. And now my signal is at about 58. So what I'm going to do is there's a little hole right here at the top of the dish. That's where you actually wanna pull back and forth. So if I push down, signal goes down. If I pull up, so we're sitting at like 75, 76 now. So the elevation bolts are going to be these ones right here. There's one on each side. So I'm going to, uh, going to go ahead and loosen those, pull up on the dish and set the elevation correctly. All right, now that I went ahead and adjusted the elevation of it, it looks like on satellite 119, we got 73, 74. Looks like on 110, we got 68. And 129, we got 53, which is good. The one thing you want to be super careful about when you're going to peak a dish after a roof is the actual dish itself that's warped. Uh, because when roofers take dishes off of roofs, they throw them on the ground and just, you know, one little inch on the actual satellite itself is, you know, 100 miles in space. So you could be getting super good satellite on, uh, super good signal on one satellite and super bad signal on another. And that's probably because the reflector on the dish itself is bent. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up some of this wiring. Uh, the zip ties just broke off as I pulled back the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up. And then I'm going to remount that ground block on the brick. All right, so I went ahead and finished up. Um, as you know, when I got here, there was a bunch of wires hanging here. They were all dead. Um, so I went ahead and removed those and just left um, a barrel on the end of this one. And then I re replaced the ground block and um, you probably saw as well that it wasn't grounded. Um, the satellite, the messenger cable's up here. So I can't even ground it if I wanted it to. But I went ahead and just grounded the ground block. Um, and then I went ahead and replaced the ground block. And then I always put new connector ends. Because if you go up to a ground block <clears throat> and one of the connectors is loose to where your hand can, you know, loosen it, chances are that it probably has or at one point had water damage at one time. So they make torque wrenches for these, but I don't. I just go ahead, use a 7 16 tighten. Tighten, and that's that. All right, we're here at the customer's house. It seems as if the customer already has the receiver, so just go make contact, unplug, plug back in. All right, so I made contact with the customer, and he. Uh, was trying to connect everything all at once and these dish network receivers are super finicky so you really only can connect um, the coaxial cable the rg6 cable and video uh, for setting up he had an over-the-air antenna for local channels and um, he was saying it couldn't download software and um, he was getting no signal and that's because um, the dish receiver was confused, you know, should I download software from the over the air or the satellite? So, um, I just left everything bare bones, did the coaxial, did the video and, um, got him squared away. Um, he has a Joey one, which are super slow. All right. So I went ahead and changed out this customer's hopper. He also had a very old, um, Joey one that I changed out, um, so yeah, this is pretty much my kind of end of day haul. Um, looks like I got this solo note for my first job. I got two wireless Joey's, um, two access points, a Joey one and a hopper. Today was just a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble calls. Um, actually pretty much every job was a trouble call except for this last one. Um, so some days are like that, some days aren't. Like for instance, yesterday, I did three new connects and an upgrade and was busy all day. Got home at like almost nine o'clock in the afternoon. So days can be like this, you know, like I only touched the ladder once, you know, and it was the small ladder just to point and peek that dish. 
And then there's days where you're absolutely swamped and every house that you go to is a two-story house and you're, you know, pulling out the 28-foot ladder. It just really depends. Um, they give you a pretty good mix. There's a really good algorithm. Um, when you get started at the day, you know, it calculates all your jobs and it takes all of your, uh, your previous jobs and, you know, puts it in a, a very good tight time frame. So you're pretty much busy throughout the entire day. Um, today was just more kind of a, a relaxed day and since I only work four days a week, um, it's super nice. Um, I still get overtime, like last pay period, I got 89 hours. Uh, so, you know, it's a very good job. Um, I kind of made this video because um, I talked to a dispatcher and she just wanted to see kind of what uh, we do in the field. So, but I figured other people would be watching too. And I mean, to answer your question, it really just depends you know it's if you're looking at this video thinking is this job right for me you know it really just depends you have to be comfortable with the scenarios you're going to be in like a uh, like a 28 foot ladder you know can were you comfortable putting that on a roof are you comfortable carrying it are you comfortable you know going you know as high up you know as that you know what i mean and then there's also you know the other things like you know, if you're scared of spiders, well, you know, it's going to suck to be crawling underneath the house, you know, fishing cable. Or, you know, if you've fallen through the attic and, you know, before and, you know, you're somewhere like I live and every place has an attic, you know. So you got to take all that into account. But I love my job. I love working for Dish. Um, I think it's a great company. Um, I and very independent and that's what's nice about being a technician is you start the day off um you know your van is your office and they give us super nice vans man so i'm not complaining so um if you're thinking about it i would definitely say give it a shot but like i said know your limitations because you're going to be an addict you're going to be in crawl spaces you're going to be climbing 28 foot ladders is it going to be every day no like i said I only crawled up on a, you know, one story house and it was a super tiny ladder today, you know, but tomorrow it could be a totally different scenario. So take everything into account. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That was my day full of trouble calls. So I'm going to go home. It's now, um, about five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. All right.